You cannot want it, but we don't lose. Turning your days can never be done. No matter how high reality seems. Let's put on to the dreams, yeah. As long as you keep your head to the sky, yeah, you can win, even if it's looking a little cloudy, as it is here in Washington, D.C. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, live from Washington, you're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. I'm Dr. Nicordelai Corte, your host and chief national political analyst. I'm in touch, and so you be in touch. Be sure to follow me on all the social media platforms at Dr. Nicordelai. That's D R N I I Q U A R T E L A I. Pro tip just type in Dr. Nee, and there I am. Also, be sure to download the KBLA app to listen to us live or on demand, or simply tell Alexa to play KBLA Talk 1580 and like magic. For your listening pleasure, there we are. Also, uh, be sure to utilize the open mic feature on the app uh, and drop me a line. It could be your point of view on something I said, something one of our guests said, uh, or something that's trending in the headlines or something that should be trending in the headlines. We want to hear from you. And so be sure to use that open mic feature. Also, subscribe to a More Perfect Union podcast. And guess what? You'll never, ever, ever miss an episode. Uh, Now, on this day, since we uh, are all students of history, uh, April 4th, 1928, one of my faves was born and likely one of your faves. Dr. Maya Angelou was born uh, this day in 1928, author of I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, which was a 1970s uh, uh, book that she authored. Um, among several other works spanning the length of her career and many different genres, Dr. Angelo became one of the world's most well-known poets. Uh, and uh, we're remembering uh, the wisdom and the spirit of Dr. Maya Angelou today. And so today would have been her birthday. Uh, and so happy heavenly birthday to Dr. Angelo. Um, now moving along to uh, your national news roundup. That's right. It's time for the good, bad and ugly headlines of the day. Uh, Look, this next story brings new meaning uh, to the the dance Harlem Shake. Uh, A 4.8 magnitude earthquake rattled New York City and uh, parts of New Jersey and uh, even was felt as far uh, as Philadelphia. A 4.8 magnitude earthquake recorded in New Jersey shook residents in surrounding states and New York City this morning. Uh, and it was one of the strongest in the state's history. The, the tumbler was reported about five miles north of White House Station, New Jersey, at about 1023 a.m. this morning. This is according to the U.S. Geological Survey. The epicenter was about 45 miles from New York City, where residents reported shaking furniture and floors. People reported feeling the shaking as far north as Maine, and as far south as Norfolk, Virginia. I'll have to check on my family there. Uh, uh, Scientists said that those in the affected areas should listen to local emergency officials and be prepared to seek cover if aftershocks occur. Uh, No major disruptions or damage have been reported in New Jersey or New York. And uh, we know just uh, not too long ago, President Biden spoke with Uh, New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy about the earthquake and the White House um, is monitoring uh, the situation uh, closely. I know the president's also spoken to uh, New York Governor Kathy Hochul um, and was at an event uh, this afternoon, Eastern time, uh, uh, with uh, Governor Wes Moore. And so uh, lots of folks paying extra close attention to this very unusual earthquake uh, that took place in uh, uh, New Jersey, that seemed to be the epicenter. Um, and so we'll continue to keep our eye uh, on that and more. Uh, moving along, um, President Biden's warning Netanyahu that U.S. policy on Gaza 
hinges on improved conditions there. NPR is reporting that President Biden told Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in a phone call on Thursday that U.S. policy on the war in Gaza will be determined by whether Israel takes a series of specific, concrete, and measurable steps to address deaths of civilians and aid workers in the territory. The 30-minute call came after seven aid workers with World Central Kitchen were killed in an Israeli strike. Uh, Biden said that the strikes and the humanitarian situation in Gaza were unacceptable and urged Netanyahu to conclude hostage talks uh, so that an immediate ceasefire can be put in place and more aid distributed in the region. And so we'll continue to to follow this. But uh, there are some that are saying this is some of the toughest talk that they've heard uh, from uh, President Biden to Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu since the war broke out on October 7th. McDonald's says that it's buying back all of its franchises in Israel. Speaking of Israel, the franchisee that owns and operates 225 McDonald's restaurants in Israel is now selling them back to the corporation. They announced this just yesterday. There have been widespread boycotts of the company after McDonald's Israel donated meals to Israeli military. Other American brands such as Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and Starbucks have also faced boycotts, particularly in Jordan, which has a large Palestinian population. Uh, the restaurant uh, owner, uh, Alonial Limited's restaurants, uh, employ more than 5,000 employees who will be uh, able to retain their jobs. That's what McDonald's is saying. And so, uh, uh, you know, this is, a, you know, a, a lingering effect of, of the war uh, in Israel, uh, a, a very unusual move, um, I'd say, uh, seeing corporate buyback uh uh, their franchises, uh, but um, uh, we'll continue to to see whether or not this is just limited to Israel for now, whether or not McDonald's might be uh, buying back other franchises in other parts of the uh, the world. Uh, moving along, um, we know that uh, one in five GOP primary voters keep bucking Trump. Well, what exactly does that mean? The Washington Post is reporting that the Republican presidential nominating contest effectively came to an end nearly a month ago. But the protest votes against Donald Trump are proving stubborn. Get this, nearly one in five GOP primary voters across four contests on Tuesday voted for an option other than the presumptive nominee. That's about the same person that voted against him on the last big primary day on March 19th. And so while President Biden continues to see votes as well as as well. And we're talking largely protest votes over his Gaza war policy uh, that's been reflected in choices like uncommitted. Uh, Trump is seeding even more since Nikki Haley dropped out of the campaign after Super Tuesday on March 5th. An average of 17 percent of those voting in GOP contests have voted against Trump compared to 11% against Biden. If you exclude low turnout caucuses in deep red states, uh, deep red Southern states, Trump is seeding an average 20% since Super Tuesday. And so uh, this is the story that folks aren't talking about that maybe we should talk about mm, just a little bit more. Just saying. Uh, when we come forward, uh, we have even more headlines to dig deep on. Uh, but uh, first, let me also just, just share uh, uh, this uh, story. Uh, really, it's a clip uh, from, of, of, of our Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, um, who reiterated what President Biden said uh, uh, in his warning to uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Take a listen. Um, and with regard to our policy in Gaza, look, just say this, if we don't see the changes that we need to see, there'll be changes in our own policy. 
That's tough talk coming from our Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken. You know, we're seeing between the conversation that President Biden had with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and uh, these latest remarks from Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, uh, rhetorically, uh, it, it seems that uh, uh, the conversation is changing with our Israeli uh, partners. Uh, but still, there are a number of folks that say, Talk is cheap. Uh, you know, we uh, also still greenlighted uh, the bombs that are being sent to Israel uh, as a part of their war campaign against Hamas. And so uh, uh, we will continue to monitor this uh, situation. But, you know, clearly we see diplomatic work afoot. We see military interventions that uh, people want to have stop uh, right away. Everybody wants a ceasefire. People want uh, the hostages return. Uh, and on top of that, you see big brands like McDonald's purchasing uh, back franchises in places like Israel. There's a lot going on in the space. And that's why we have our eye on all of it. Uh, when we come forward, speaking of somebody who has their eye on a lot of things and their finger on the pulse, uh, we're welcoming back Al Reynolds. He's the co-host of TGIF on Fox Soul. He's also an entertainment and pop culture correspondent. And uh, it's pop culture happy hour here. And uh, uh, we love a, a good happy hour with Al Reynolds when we come forward. You're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. A safe place to go loud, loud, loud. A place for progressive politics. KBLA Talk 1580. We must understand the politics of our community. And we must know what politics is supposed to produce. produce. This election year, KBLA Talk 1580 is the place for politics, unapologetically progressive politics. And we've got two of the best and brightest to help you cut through all the noise. Weekdays at 1 p.m., it's a more perfect union with Dr. Nick Quarterly Corte. And at 4 p.m., it's Ariva Martin in real time. He's the university professor and distinguished member of the White House Correspondents Association. She's a best selling author and Harvard trained civil rights lawyer. And they are both here every day to help guide you through all the sh this year because you know it's going to get deep. Get your politics on weekday afternoons at 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. with a more perfect union hosted by Dr. Nick Quarterly Corte and Ariva Martin in real time only on KBLA Talk 1580. We've got your black. black. Eggs are a staple in our diets, and there's only one egg with more delicious farm-fresh taste plus superior nutrition. Eggland's Best. With more vitamins, including six times more vitamin D and ten times more vitamin E, plus 25% less saturated fat than ordinary eggs. Available in so many delicious varieties. Classic, cage-free, and organic. Eggland's Best. Better taste, better nutrition, better eggs. Always night pads are designed for a perfect night's sleep so you can do your bear hugging a pillow thing, your free falling starfish thing, your burrito in a blanket with the AC blasting thing. While always night pads with rapid dry technology do their we've got your back with fast absorbency and up to 10 hours of protection thing. So while your period's doing its own thing, always let you do your sleep freely with a heavy flow thing. Find always pads at your local Target store or online. <laughs> KBLA Talk 1580 is the fastest growing talk radio station in Southern California, home to 50,000 watts and an audience reach of 12 million listeners. KBLA Talk 1580 is a pioneer for black audio content, including our groundbreaking $2 million climate justice campaign and the most loyal influential audience. According to an independent research study by the polling firm of Iteris, for the second consecutive year, KBLA Talk 1580 is the most trustworthy, reliable, and credible news source for Black audiences and beyond in Southern California. Let KBLA Talk 1580 power your advertising dollars. Our omni-channel custom marketing solutions are specifically tailored to connect with your ideal target audience. We leverage audio, podcasts, streaming, digital, social media, and local activations to get your message out to the Black community. Get in touch with our advertising team today at advertising at KBLA1580.com. That's advertising at KBLA1580.com. KBLA1580, we've got you live. 
Broadcasting live from Lower Park, USA. Welcome back to your home for unapologetically progressive radio. KBLA Talk 1580. You're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. I'm Dr. Nicordelai Corte, and uh, really delighted to welcome back to the show Al Reynolds. He is the co-host uh, of uh, TGIF on Fox Soul. He's also an entertainment and pop culture correspondent, and mm-hmm. we are Glad to have him back. Happy <laughs> Happy Friday. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. You know, I'm actually in uh, the DMV. I'm in Washington, D.C. this week. So, you know, the weather's a little chilly, missing the L.A. Uh, sun, but got to do what you got to do, right? Uh, look, I'm right here with you in Washington, D.C., and, and I get you. I mean, it was just 70 70- 75 degrees almost in LA and right, right. Here it, it it doesn't quite spring ain't springing. I ain't springing yet. So you're in DC. I'm in I'm in DC and so uh we might meet up while you're here. Yeah, absolutely it'd be good. Um but you know uh let's talk about Diddy. Okay. Um, Ooh, let's talk about Diddy. Right. This Diddy, <laughs> this Diddy news, this Diddy news uh is nonstop. NBC News is reporting that Sean Diddy Combs son has been accused mm. of sexual assault in a lawsuit that also names the music mogul as a defendant. That's right. Sean Diddy Combs, who's the subject of a federal sex trafficking investigation, has been mm. named as a defendant in a new lawsuit that alleges that his son sexually assaulted a woman while she was working on a yacht that the music mogul had chartered for a trip at the end of 2022. Ooh. The allegations this is the latest of a wave of lawsuits accusing Diddy of sexual assault, sexual trafficking, and engaging in other criminal activity. Uh, You know, is this a a situation where, you know, folks will continue to just sort of come out the woodwork? Uh, Or, you know, are we seeing folks sort of summon the courage, uh, you know, to to share their story uh, that they have, uh, you know, otherwise felt nobody would believe? You know what, Dr. Nicola, I think it's a combination of both. I think that, you know, that is something that I wish, or not wish, I, that is something that I, I would have thought that Diddy would have taken into consideration um, when being, you know, sued. This is just, there's so many layers to this. Now, Diddy's, uh, Christian Combs has been charged with, not ch- well, yeah, he's been sued for, right? Rape and drugging, okay? Mm-hmm. It couldn't get any worse because it just recently happened, you know, in 2022, that happens to be the time in which Rodney Jones worked with Diddy. So these are the key factors here. And he said in the year that he has worked there, these are the things that he saw and these are the offenses that he personally have experienced, right? So this all is very, very, very interesting. Now, what makes it even super sad, right, is that his father is under the exact same allegations. Mm-hmm. And he's in the middle of a raid. So all of this, in my opinion, is not by happenstance. You know what I mean? Like, I think the federal government knew exactly, uh, and the prosecutor, right, knew exactly, uh, or the lawyer for Rodney Jones knew exactly how to roll this out. Because it's doing nothing but getting uglier and uglier and uglier. But it's also making more and more and more sense, right? And 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 what impact do you think this is going to have on pop culture? Uh, because you know, obviously, you know, a lot of people are going to look, you know, at hip hop culture and try and make it about mm-hmm. hip hop culture. A lot of people are going to try and make it about the music industry. You and I know that it's bigger than that. There are, right. you know, allegations of rich and powerful people of all different colors uh, across industries that unfortunately. Um, make and don't make the headlines on a regular basis. But what impact do you think Diddy in particular, his cases, in, you know, will have uh, on pop culture? Uh, I happen to think mm-hmm. that uh, if uh, he's indi- indicted, if uh, any of these cases go to trial, uh, that they could possibly be as big, if not bigger, than Weinstein, Epstein, and Cosby combined. Well, you know what? What's interesting about this is because of his big persona, it's his, his, his entire um, image and brand is around marketing him as this great mogul, right? 
it'll definitely have an impact on on the culture, especially the urban culture. But it's going to be very similar to R. Kelly. You know, once you've heard for 20 and 30 years rumbling and then you finally are exposed. Right. And then in this case, if he is found guilty, then I think just as an urban community, we always know how to wrap that up and shift with it the same way we shift with R. Kelly. You know, even I am guilty sometimes of still be, you know, rocking my head and moving to the beat of an R. Kelly song. However, R. Kelly does not have a defining moment for me anymore in pop culture. He has a music defining moment, but him as a legend that has kind of, you know, that light has kind of dimmed. And I think that is probably what's going to happen here in the Diddy situation. The only issue with the Diddy situation, though, are all the people that he's attached to, right? Like Biggie Smalls and Faith Evans and Mary J. Blige. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to watch how they are staying very much far away from this right now because they, too, don't want their brand to be stained in this process. I do feel like that there would be some shift but I think the shift would be good. It's time for the younger generation to come in. We say this all the time. Uh, 50, I mean, um, Diddy is a little bit older than me, but it's time for our generation to pass it down. The sad part in this situation is he should be prepared to pass it to his kids. He himself has now jeopardized his family's legacy. And now that his son is being driven, dr drug into it, it's like, oh, wow. You know, they're eroding the whole brand of Diddy in all of the years and contributions that he's had in pop culture. Yeah. And the question is really, you know, you know, yeah, you're passing down a legacy, but a legacy of what? You right. Know, you know, you're passing things down. You know, are you passing down sort of sort of integrity? Are you passing down, you know, you know, uh, you know, stand up character? Are you passing down right. you know, those things as well? And I think that's also a part of what's driving interest in the fact that now, you know, his son. Uh, Christian has been named uh, in uh, one of the lawsuits. Uh, you know, I, I also think it's important for us to say that there's a tendency in the public square mm -hmm. to uh, uh, pronounce guilt by association. Absolutely. Um, and, and you know, and I know, look, there are a lot of, you know, events that we get invited to. There are a lot of parties out there. And sometimes... Yeah. You know, uh, there are things happening at parties in other, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> other parts of the party that you may have no knowledge of, right? right. right. And so I think we got to leave open the, the, the possibility that there are people that might have been in Diddy's orbit, right. uh, but, but, but not involved in some of the, the Absolutely. other activities. Absolutely. Now, I have done an entire series on my YouTube channel. It's and my YouTube channel is the at symbol the Al Reynolds, and I do a five part series surrounding this whole did he do it. So, if you if any of your listeners or viewers want to go to my YouTube channel, I break this down from top to bottom. And then I this past week, that was two weeks ago. This past week, I created a new show called The Court of Public Opinion, in which we still are tra tracking the Diddy case along with other cases. So I do recommend if people want a thorough understanding of what's going on in a Diddy case, please come to my YouTube channel to find that out. Now, this is what's interesting as it relates to people going to the parties. I've been to the parties. <laughs> I've been to a number of those parties, of, of, of Diddy parties. However, I was never a part of the parties in which they discuss. So there's two things going on here. There's a party that he would have like to 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 have for his birthday. So he would have a white party in the Hamptons, for instance. All of those types of parties, the people went to and open to the public and a lot of celebrities who have attended, those are the just the basic party parties. Now, what happened when that was over and what who stayed and how they partied later on after those parties is a different story. Now, there's also another set of parties that he would have where he would, you know, where we see the Daphne Joyce being mentioned in the complaint, where he would have these parties with with escorts. And 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 that was a different another different type of party. So as it relates to all these celebrities that you see that they have. Um, um, associated or, or, you know, saying that they were in relation with Diddy, they, majority of them, like myself, 
like my ex, like a lot of people in the industry, we went to the birthday parties. That was the birthday party. <laughs> and we didn't make it to, or at least I know I didn't make it to the birthday suit parties. <laughs> I'm like, oh, thank goodness I got I skipped the bullet there. <laughs> and, and and you are referring to what are called the freak offs. At least yeah. That's how it's been reported. Um, and, you know, so it's just another reminder that there are levels uh, to this. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think uh, we're going to see the interest uh, in this case continue to rise. We're talking to Al Reynolds, the co-host of Fox Souls TGIF. He's also an entertainment and pop culture correspondent. And we have him here to help us dig a little bit deeper That's into right. the headlines. More when we come forward with Al Reynolds. You're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. The station you turn to when you had it up to gear with cultural incompetence. KBLA Talk 1580. Trey Thomas, here's the latest on the Black Information Network. The family of Black motorist Patrick Leoya is still waiting for the trial of the former Grand Rapids, Michigan police officer who shot and killed him on April 4th, 2022. The 26-year-old was shot and killed by Christopher Schur during a struggle after a traffic stop. Local NAACP president Clee Jackson says it's taking too long for that trial to start. Many students at Washington University say more needs to be done in response to a recent racial incident on campus. One student tells five on your side the disturbance last month involved splattering eggs, screaming, and spitting in the dining hall to intimidate black students and workers. That's the latest. I'm Trey Thomas on your home for 24-7 News, the Black Information Network at BINnews.com. Robert Half Research indicates 9 out of 10 hiring managers are having difficulty hiring. Robert Half is here to help. Their recruiting professionals use proprietary AI to connect businesses with highly skilled talent. At Robert Half, they know talent. Visit roberthalf.com today. This is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. What was your favorite Bronny James moment at USC? If you're unable to come up with an answer, no problem. A lot of folks might not be able to answer that question. After one season at USC, LeBron's son announced on Instagram that he's entering the NBA draft and the NCAA transfer portal. If Bronny decides to stay in school for another year, he will be on a different campus. The deadline to withdraw from the draft is May 31st. Bronny missed five months of basketball activity to treat a congenital heart defect. He did not play a full season. In 25 games off the bench, he averaged only 4.8 points, 2.1 assists, and 19 minutes. Bronny has to be cleared by the NBA's fitness to play panel before he can participate in team workouts and the scouting combine. He will spend the next few weeks getting info on what NBA teams think of his draft position. Stay tuned. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson on KBLA Talk 1580. <laughs> This is KBLA Talk 1580. Talk radio. Let music to your ears. We're unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580. Hi, I'm Tavis Smiley. And I'm Captain Mayor Emma Sharif. You have no doubt been hearing promos and expert conversations on our various weekday shows and downloading details at kbla1580.com about our climate justice campaign, which is now in full effect. The city of Compton is pleased to partner with KBLA Talk 1580 to celebrate Earth Day 2024 as we serve, share, and help our city shine. And KBLA Talk 1580 is just as excited to join the city of Compton as we broadcast live and bring our KBLA delegation with us to help clean are invited to join us. Come meet us on Saturday, April the 20th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at 212 West Cypress Street in Compton as we fan out to clean up our city. The first 50 KBLA listeners to hit our website at kbla1580.com will receive a free KBLA tea when you join us on Saturday morning, April 20th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at 212 West Cypress Street in Compton. Now, no show, no shirt, but sign up at kbla 
CLA1580.com right now to help us clean up Compton as part of Earth Day 2024. We will see you on Saturday, April the 20th, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at 212 West Cypress Street in the city of Compton to do our part for Earth Day 2024. We are KBLA Talk 1580, caring about the climate, caring about the community, cleaning up Compton. We've got a lot to talk about. Race, culture wars, political turf battles, criminal justice, and injustice. The courts. These are the conversations you won't hear elsewhere. My guests are leading journalists, celebrities, and sports figures, elected leaders, and influencers. They aren't afraid to get into it and say the quiet part out loud. With Ariva Martin in real time, your commute just became the most engaging part of your day. Tune in weekdays from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. or find us on YouTube. Ariva Martin in real time when you want it straight, no chaser. Unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got your black. black. It's the celebration of a living legend. It's, it's me, Frankie Vessel. Thank you for the love. Sing to me that Plus, there's seven. It's a Mother's Day celebration, May 12th, in the Kia Forum. In commemoration of your all life. Get tickets to the Master. Presented by the Black Promoters Collective. Yo, come on. Come on. At KBLA Talk 1580, we fight the power every day. Yeah. Gotta give us one and one. Uh. Gotta give us what we need. Hey. I listen to KBLA and I love the commercials. I know what the commercials mean. I also, if I'm looking and trying to figure something out, I need something to talk to me that might hit me. And it happens on TV because, you know, every time they show a sporting event, they got the pharmaceutical companies back to back to back telling people how to fix the sickness on the same stuff that they sell them. So we get it. Yep, we get it too, Chucky. And that's why at KBLA Talk 1580, we don't black down. Yeah, our freedom of speech is freedom of death. We, we got, got to fight the power. Fight the power. Fight the power. Fight the power. This is KBLA Talk 1580, where hate meets a scholarly match. Hey. 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 You're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. I'm Dr. Nicole Corte, and it's always fun. It's always a pleasure to be in conversation with my brother, Al Reynolds. He is the uh, co-host of Fox Soul's TGIF. He's also an entertainment and pop culture correspondent. And we've got him here with us today to make it make sense. Yeah, the t- spill the tea. Spill it, spill it, spill it. Uh, but careful, it might be a little hot, um, especially right. given this next story, which is hot off the press. Bronny James. Son of Lakers star LeBron James declares for the NBA draft. NBC News is reporting that Bronny James, who's the elder son of L.A. Lakers superstar LeBron LeBron James, declared for the 2024 NBA draft uh, on a social media post. The former uh, Southern California guard, the University of Southern California, fight on. Y'all know what time it is. Uh, He said that he will also enter the NCAA transfer portal to maintain eligibility if he decides to return to college. James will work out and meet with the NBA teams to determine if he wants to turn professional. He has until June 16th to withdraw his name from consideration. Is it too soon? Is it too soon, especially given that he had this, he has this congenital heart defect, which, you know, took him, you know, off the court for a long time. He didn't really you know, play a lot his first full year. And now he's going, uh, he's expressed his interest of of going into the draft. Is it, is it too soon now? Absolutely not. This is a plan. He and his father have a plan. And the plan is LeBron James has this, this, this goal, this, this dream that he wants to play in the NBA with his son. So, you know, they had the heart, they had the um, health scare, right? So they were like, Ooh, and then LeBron's also getting older, and it seems like he's about ready to sit down, even though he would be considered to, from many as one of the best athletes or the greatest athletes of his time in basketball. I'm loving this because this is how you use influence. This is how you use black excellence. You marry the two together and you give an opportunity to your children. And that's what I'm really liking about this. We know that Bronny doesn't need the money. 
in 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 college his first year as a freshman his nil deals are 4.5 million dollars the young boy is making money at the tune greater than some nba players in fact it may be bigger than his nba kids first nba contract now this is the funny part and i am not saying anything about um Bronny james's athletic athleticism right I'm talking specifically about his statistics. Now, he has probably the worst statistics as a, as a basketball player. We do know that he was sick, uh, that he did have that health scare or, or whatever. But he only averaged 4.8 points, 2.8 rebounds, 21 assists, and only 19.4 minutes of play per game, shooting at 36% as a freshman. Now, we know he didn't play the whole season, but those are his stats that will go out to all of the NBA recruiters, which is hilarious because otherwise people would just be like, what? Who is this? Why are we even looking at this kid? But you know why they're looking at this kid? They're looking at this kid because although his stock may fall with his stats, his stock is going to quadruple because you have the ability to possibly get LeBron James to come to the team that recruits Bronny James. Don't you just love it how your father with all this influence, all of this money is influencing another young brother, like another young hardworking. We've seen he's very hardworking. He's very athletic. And I, I, I something about that will make me support this. So, so is he... It, I'm sorry. So, so I've got to ask you. So, you know, so what do you think are the odds that the LA Lakers will pick up Bronny James? <laughs> let's, let's just call the question. You just want to put the question out there. <laughs> Listen, I, you know, it, it all depends on that front office because you know the owners. The owners clearly could see something like that percolating. But does he want to be at the LA Lakers? Where would he? Where would he rank? in that in that position in, in that lineup so i don't know that i would necessarily do the lakers because at the same time you don't want your son to just be sitting on the bench you want to play with your son you want to pass the ball to your son you want to do a one-two combination and score with your son so you might want to think about a team that does not have all of that ability clouded because you know it's it's lebron but then you have all the other players that are are which are franchise names. And then where, where does the sun land in that pecking order? And that's one thing that the front office, besides the owners, the, that's where the real politics come in. So maybe we have to wait and see, Dr. DeCordelai. <laughs> well, well, one thing we don't have to wait and see is the 99 cents only stores closed. Mm -hmm. LA Times reporting that mm -hmm. all 371 stores Mm. Gonna wind down their business. Can you even believe this? 99 cents only stores are closing 371 of its stores and yeah. winding down its business operations after more than four decades. Four decades in business, they cite multiple factors, including the unprecedented impact of the COVID 19 <laughs> pandemic, shifting consumer demand, persistent inflationary pressures, yeah. and rising levels of shrink, an industry term that refers to a loss of inventory attributed to reasons such as shoplifting, employee right. theft, and administrative error. Is this really just sort of a sign of the time, just sort of an another mainstay that's riding out into the sunset? You know, or, you know, is this a sign of our economy uh, being on shaky ground, at least the perception that our economy is on shaky ground? I think there are so many moving parts to this, right? Right. So in this particular case, you have rising rage, wages. You know, it's no longer, you know, $10 or $14 an hour. The rate, the wages, minimum wage is increasing to $20 an hour, right? So you have, you have increasing rage, wages for a company like this. Think about their employment um, pool. Who, the, who can actually work at a 99 cent store. So as the wages increase, then that cuts into the profit. You also have inflation. Inflation now is cutting into their profit. But I think the biggest thing, and you've seen it, um, you can't walk into a CVS now without going to a section where they're locking stuff up and you have to push a button in order to get your deodorant or to get your- Among deodorant. other things. All right. <laughs> Yeah, the, <laughs> the other things. And that is telling you, when we started to see that, that's telling you that especially in that retail space, that pharmacy space, that, that drug retail space, that the shrinkage is becoming a huge issue. 
Couple that also with legislation that now the security guards at these stores cannot stop a customer from leaving if they're stealing. You've seen the videos on YouTube. People just go into these Dwayne Reeds, they go into these Walgreens, they go into these CVS, they clear the shelf and put them in bags and they walk out because technically you can't stop them. And it's it's so bad now in certain areas, especially in, in, in New York City, I know, you walk into certain pharmacies and certain drug retailers and the, and the shelves are empty. Well, I'm so glad we got the right one. I mean, before uh, you were on the TV side, you worked in the financial services yes. uh, sector. So you know what you're talking about here. Uh, when we come forward, uh, what does a DEI ban mean on college campuses? Well, we're going to share a little bit about uh, how that's showing up, particularly among students in Texas. And we're going to get Al's take on uh, these DEI bans and, and what they might mean for our future. You're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580, the quiet part out loud when we come forward. The quiet part out loud, loud. KBLA Talk 1580. KLA, be an eco-friendly hero. Join LADWP's Power Savers program and use your smart thermostat to help ease strain on the electric grid during peak electric demand. You'll save electricity while you lower your bill. Plus, as a power saver, you can get up to $185 in prepaid gift cards. Don't have a smart thermostat? No problem. Shop and sign up at LADWP.com slash Power Savers Program. That's LADWP.com slash Power Savers Program. To help combat climate change, LADWP is helping neighborhoods have better access to electric vehicles by awarding nearly $130 million in EV rebates to customers just like you. From big savings on used EVs to building new charging plazas, LADWP is charging ahead to help all Angelinos experience the benefits of EVs. Get rebates of up to $4,000 for a used EV and $1,750 for a charger. Learn more at LADWP.com slash EV. That's LADWP. Dot com slash EV. KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580, connecting you with services and solutions. Stay Housed LA has the resources you need to know your rights and the legal support to back them up. The COVID-19 pandemic has cost people their jobs and livelihoods. This has left an estimated one third of households not being able to make rent and facing losing their homes. This is a fear no one in our community should have to face. You have rights though, and Stay Housed LA is here to help. Stay Housed LA is a partnership between the County of Los Angeles, the City of Los Angeles, and local community and legal service providers. Together, they provide tenants with the information and support needed to exercise their rights so they can remain safely in their homes. Find out more about your rights by participating in a virtual tenant workshop. Get the legal assistance you need. Find additional resources in Los Angeles County and the City of Los Angeles. Stay connected to Stay Housed LA County for updates. This and more at stayhousedla.org. Stay connected to Stay Housed LA for updates. This and more at stayhousedla.org. That's stayhousedla.org. Or call their hotline at 213-694-0040. We've got your black with a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. At KBLA Talk 1580, we do more than just talk. You got a big mouth. We're unapologetically progressive and we don't black down. You are watching and listening to a more perfect union on KBLA Talk 1580. Dr. Nicole Corte here with the Al Reynolds. Uh, going beyond the headlines. Um, This story coming out of Texas uh, really has caught my attention. I've been paying extra close attention to, you know, some of the DEI bans that are popping up uh, across the country. Uh, University of Texas junior Isabel Ballard was part of the Fearless Leadership Institute, which is a program that supported Black and Hispanic female students. The program helped her find a community on campus with shared experiences and gave her access to opportunities that she wouldn't have otherwise, uh, such as taking her first ever flight to New York to network with businesses. But then on January 1st, the state's anti-DEI law went into effect. The legislation was signed by Texas Governor Greg Abbott last year, banning diversity, equity, and inclusion offices and initiatives 
at public universities and colleges. This week, the university began laying off at least 60 staff members, according to, to a number of people with knowledge who spoke to the Austin American Statesman, which is a part of the USA Today Network. Uh, in an email to the university community on Tuesday, the UT Austin president, Jay Hartzell, uh, said that uh, in implementing changes required under the law, the university would close the new campus division altogether and eliminate programs that, quote, now overlap with our efforts elsewhere. And so, uh, you know, this is just sort of the, the latest sort of perversion mm. of efforts to advance racial justice and gender justice uh, on college campuses. Uh, Al, I want to give you an opportunity to give your take on this. You know, I, Dr. Nicola, I, 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 this is just devastating to me. This whole concept of what's happening in the D, in the DEI space is very concerning, and I don't understand why there isn't a bigger out, you know, or louder outrage from our community, from our large organizations like the NAACP, um, Urban League. I, I just don't understand why, why we are allowing or sitting back and allowing this to happen in, in the fashion in which it has happened. Now, listen. There's also 82 additional bills that are being proposed to just swipe, you know, wipe away all of this diversity and inclusion in um, all levels. And to me, that is just frightening because when I think about the importance of making sure that all black and brown uh, kids, students, whomever, even in, the, in, in, in corporate America, that they have the exact same opportunities right? The same opportunities and the same access. That's what these DEI programs do. And in this particular case, this young lady talked about how being at a university where there aren't many black and brown people, that these types of programs helped her find, not only fund her scholastically, but also help her find community, right? And in her finding community, she's able to then find you know, the vein in which she would like to study or the discipline that she would like to study and what she would like to do as a career moving forward. When you start to eliminate these programs and you eliminate black and brown kids from having access and opportunity, it's almost like you're putting us back into the days of segregation. Mm -hmm. You're right. You're, I think you're absolutely right. And, you know, I think part of the reason why we don't see um, uh, enough of a push back against these bans. I mean, you know, I don't think we have seen uh, Democratic governors, for example, uh, move uh, aggressively enough uh, to fortify uh, the programs as they are, um, you know, let alone, you know, uh, proactively protect them. I just don't think we're seeing enough of that. And part of it, I think, might be language. You know, mm. uh, sometimes we get lost in the alphabet, diversity, right. equity, in inclusion, DEI, you know, uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, mm. uh, queer or questioning, LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes those letters can uh, take away people's ability to see our humanity, right? Because to me, you know, good old fashioned DEI, you know what that was? It was just was that? racial justice. It was yeah. a civil and human rights. Yes. Right? yes. And, and, and we've seen this movie before. You know, we've we've seen yeah. what happens when barriers to opportunity, you know, are knocked down. Uh, we've seen it in law schools across the country. Uh, we've seen it in medical schools across the country. How there's been an influx mm -hmm. of lawyers of color and doctors of color. And then the other side gets mad and erects those barriers again. Right. Yeah. And, you're 100% you're correct. Remember back in the day, you're a little bit younger than me, but back in the day, it used to be special populations. Then after special populations, it became multicultural. So that was the big buzzword. And then after you rotated out of multicultural, then it, it, it went to diversity, diversity, diversity. I just think we've been trying to paint this pig with different names for a very long time. However, people don't care. You know, people that don't look like black and brown like us really still have this undercurrent of racism where they don't want you to have access in the same opportunities. They want there to be a hierarchy and they want to say when you get it and when it can be taken away. And see, that's the crucial part. 
So when you have things like the multicultural or diversity set asides or any type of set asides, equity and inclusion, that scares people. That scares people because people don't want the playing field level, right? We've been fighting against uneven um, rules for a long time and we are still excelling. People are scared that if you make the playing field too level, then they're going to take over. See, that's the problem. My kid is not going to get an opportunity because of that little brown kid. Well, yeah, that's right. We deserve it. You've been boxing us out for hundreds and hundreds of years. We're playing catch up at best, and you won't even give us this little bit. So if the 100 employees that you are hiring or the 1,000 kids that you're allowing into that school, we can't have five slots. We can't have five slots of some of the most exceptional uh, of its applicant base. We can't have that. What is the problem? And where, where, where are they afraid? What are they afraid of? Where are they afraid? Like, I just don't understand it. I, you know, this fires me up. So I'm gonna be quiet and let you <laughs> let you go ahead and back to this because it's just, it's just, it's just an old school tactic a racist tactic of isolating people, right? Or icing them out and not allowing them the opportunity to provide for their family and their and their and their generations of their family like their cohorts are. And it's just not fair. It, it, it not only is it not fair, but it's unjust because we are not asking for anything we haven't already That's earned. Right. We don't give me nothing that I haven't already earned. Uh when we come forward, uh final word, final thought. Uh, from Al Reynolds, our special guest today. You're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580 is an intervention. When we come forward, includes you. KBLA Talk 1580, turning pain into power. power. If you love to travel, Capital One has a rewards credit card that's perfect for you. With Venture X, earn unlimited double miles on everything you buy and turn everyday purchases into extraordinary trips. Plus, receive premium travel benefits like access to over 1,300 airport lounges where you just check in and chill out. Open up a world of possibilities with Capital One. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. Lounge access is subject to change. See CapitalOne.com for details. Sometimes we lose, sometimes we win. Sometimes we try to fit it all in. Sometimes we don't know what's in store. Sometimes we find what we're looking for. Sometimes we're rolling easy and free. Sometimes one and one makes three. So much to love along this ride. That's why Nationwide is on your side. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. It's the celebration of a living legend. It's the It's me, Frankie Vessel. May 12th in the Kia Forum. You're all one. You get tickets to Ticketmaster. Presented by the Black Promoters Collective. We know you stick around. This is LA's home for progressive talk radio. Welcome back to KBLA Talk 1580. You're listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 1580. Of course, we are remembering one of my heroes uh, and she rose, likely one of yours too, Al, uh, Dr. Maya Angelou, uh, oh, who yeah. we celebrated a birthday today. Uh, may she rest in peace. Uh, I, I also uh, uh, got a little bit of breaking news during the break. Um, Mayor Karen Bass has officially endorsed Adam Schiff for mm -hmm. the U.S. Senate seat in California. Uh, she's endorsed Schiff to, to uh, 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 serve. Um, uh, uh, the people of California, including Los Angeles, the largest city in California and second largest in the country. Uh, the mayor said, quotes, I've known Adam for decades and his service for Angelinos speaks for itself. We need someone in the U.S. Senate who has been a proven partner, someone who's locked arms to confront the homelessness crisis, someone who knows what it takes to make our city and state safer, someone who will defend a woman's right to choose and someone who knows what we need to do when the very fabric of our democracy is on the line, the alternative in this race is a Republican who wants to take us backwards, and we cannot let that happen. I look forward to doing 
all that I can to make sure we send Adam to the U.S. Senate. Uh, and so uh, uh, that was uh, uh, some breaking news uh, coming up uh, just nine minutes ago. Again, uh, Mayor Karen Bass of Los Angeles has endorsed uh, Representative Adam Schiff for the U.S. Senate seat in California. Um, and uh, that's all the time we have. Uh, I've always enjoyed <laughs> my time with no! <laughs> Where should people go to follow you and, oh. and tap into TGIF? Sure. So, you know, to watch the incredible show, everyone, you have to watch it. Watch it. TGIF. It comes on uh, daily, Monday through Friday. It comes on 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern. You can watch it on multiple streaming platforms, Apple TV. You can watch it on YouTube, which I think is the most convenient. All you have to type in is Fox Soul. That's F O X Soul S O U L and T G I F. That's T E A, like T spilling the T and G I F. And we, you can find us on most platforms, most streaming platforms. Now, for my my Diddy Do It series, which is really hot, you can go to my YouTube channel, and that's the at symbol at the Al Reynolds. And you can also follow me on IG. I'm not pretty. I'm not that active on Twitter, but on Instagram, you can follow me at, at the Al Reynolds. Thank you, uh, Al Reynolds. And thanks to all our leaders, learners, and listeners. Uh, also, thanks to the Village helps to produce a more perfect union each and every day. I'm talking about our executive producer, Tavis Smiley, our sound engineer extraordinaire, Miles Lowe, our show producer, Robert Battles, and our podcast publishing guru, Odell Puppy. Remember, don't panic, organize. Do what you can from where you are with what you have. I'm Dr. Nicordelai Corte. And you've been listening to A More Perfect Union on KBLA Talk 15.